Hi everyone, my name is FlygonHG, and this is the video of my attempt at a hardcore nuzlocke of Pokemon Leaf Green using only Water-type Pokemon. To see what I define as hardcore nuzlocke rules, check out the description below. But in short, no items in battle, no overleveling past the gym leader's ace, and we're playing on set mode. So water might be one of the best types for a monotype challenge. Water is the most common type, representing about 16% of all Pokemon. As a result, there's usually a good number of them in every Pokemon game. Plus, a lot of water types have secondary typings that give them either a good secondary stab attack, a useful resistance, or in some cases, a useful immunity. The result is that water type mono challenges have a pretty diverse roster of Pokemon to choose from. Plus, the HM for Surf gives your entire team a 95 base power stab move with no drawbacks. In Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green, there are a whopping 16 fully evolved water type Pokemon. Of course, this list gets cut down a bit since many of them are version exclusives. I chose Leaf Green because my last few Kanto challenges were in Fire Red. Might as well mix it up. This means no Golduck and no Coyster. Oh no. I'll also have to choose between Amistar and Kabutops, so that's 13 encounters total. But just look at some of our options. Sea King? They might as well just hand me the win now. He's literally the king of the sea. Hey, speaking of seeking, if you're seeking out a place to learn new creative skills and grow as a content creator, then you should check out this video's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where you can find thousands of classes designed to teach you creative skills, ranging from topics like illustration, graphic design, and video editing. I get a lot of questions asking for advice on starting a YouTube channel. On Skillshare, there are a ton of videos from people much more successful than me detailing every step of content creation. Maybe there's a class for creating good segues into sponsored ads. I don't know, clearly I didn't take it. But I did check out Jordy Vanderputt's Adobe Premiere Pro for beginners class, since I always make sure to try my sponsors before talking about them. And I'm currently in the process of transitioning to Premiere Pro for editing anyways. I figured that I'd watch a few lessons just to get a feel for the platform. But Jordy's lessons ended up being so good that I watched his entire three hour class in one sitting. And then the next morning I started up his advanced class, the best part of Skillshare classes is that you can complete them at your own pace and however you want. There's no commitment, you can skip individual lessons if you're not interested, and because Skillshare is focused on learning, all of their content is ad-free. Don't you just hate it when you get interrupted by ads? Skillshare is less than $10 a month, but the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description below will get a free trial of Skillshare's premium membership so that you can explore your creativity for free. Thanks so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now let's get into the challenge. Just as a quick reminder before we start, I play with Species Claws, so I'll be able to re-roll encounters until I get a unique encounter, but I can only use one of each unique evolution line. Okay, let's see how this goes. I start the challenge by selecting Squirtle as my starter. I name him One Fish, and then we're challenged by my rival, who I name Land. You know, since fish hate land. Not the most clever of rival nicknames, I'll admit. One Fish takes out Charmander, and we continue on our journey. Now, although this challenge has a lot of encounters, most of them aren't available until the mid-game when I can start fishing. So, one fish is going to have to solo the first gym. Fortunately, the first gym is Brock, so I sprinkle his rocks with some water, and then we move on. On the way to Cerulean City, I'm able to get my second encounter. A shifty man sells me a magic carp in the Pokemon Center outside of Mount Moon for about 500 poke. The game makes a point about how this is an outrageous amount of money to spend on a magic carp, but it's not that expensive, right? A Pokeball is 200 Poke, and this Magikarp comes in one for free. So really the Magikarp is only 300 Poke. An Escape Rope is like 550 Poke. So I get a Magikarp for about half the price of a piece of rope. Seems like a pretty fair deal to me. I intended to name this Magikarp Two Fish, but I accidentally name it Fish Two instead. I'll fix it later. Next, one fish evolves into War Turtle, and he grows a very bizarre and fluffy pair of ears that will be completely abandoned in the design for Blastoise. I guess it's kind of just an awkward phase that War Turtle is going through, but a fluffy Blastoise would be pretty funny looking. Then I make my way through Mount Moon. Along the way, I pick up the Helix Fossil, while this non-believer takes the Dome Fossil. Enjoy Purgatory, you heathen. After that, I go through the very tedious grind of leveling up Fish 2 to level 20, where he evolves into Gyarados. Hey, Fish 2 evolved into Gyarados. That wasn't intentional, but cool. Next up is Misty, and she could be difficult, but One Fish and Fish 2 both know Bite for her Starmie, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem. She leads Staryu, and I lead One Fish. Staryu instantly hits a Water Pulse to confuse One Fish, but a Person Berry cures the confusion, and I hit it with a Bite. Staryu goes for another Water Pulse, and then another Bite brings it down to Red Health. I anticipate a Heal here, so I hit it with a Tail Whip. 
Then on the next turn, Staryu hits another Water Pulse, which confuses again. But one fish is able to break through it and knock out the Staryu with a Mega Kick. Starmie comes out next, so I switch to Fish 2. After Starmie hits a pretty weak Water Pulse, I hit a Bite. But because Starmie has Recover, this doesn't seem like the best strategy. So I decide to switch back to one fish. One fish gets hit with a Water Pulse, which triggers yet another confusion, but he does manage to hit a Tail Whip. Then I switch back to Fish 2. I go for a Tackle, thinking that it might do more with the Defense Drop and Gyarados' monstrous attack stat, but it doesn't. However, it only gets Starmie into the yellow, so it doesn't heal. That allows Fish 2 to finish it off with a bite on the next turn. Not the cleanest win, but I'll take it. Next we've got probably the trickiest part of the run. The level cap only goes up by 3 levels here to level 24, but there's a bunch of stuff I need to do. With only 2 Pokemon, it's pretty tough to not overlevel here, especially because there's 2 rival fights. Both of these are actually pretty easy though, since Gyarados' flying type means that he resists Ivysaur's grass type attacks. Unfortunately, Gyarados' flying type also means that he is 4 times weak to electric type attacks, and the next gym leader is Lieutenant Surge, who happens to specialize in electric types. He's not as tough as Watson since he only has 3 Pokemon and he doesn't have a Magneton, plus in this game I can get the TM for secret power before this gym, which means Fish 2 actually has a fairly powerful physical move at his disposal. But on this first attempt, I go in with basically zero preparation. I didn't do any calculations and my Pokemon aren't EV trained. So Fish 2 doesn't one-shot the Voltorb and it hits a Sonic Boom. On the next turn, Lieutenant Surge uses a Super Potion and I hit another Secret Power. Then Voltorb goes down to one more Secret Power. Pikachu is next and thankfully does get one-shot by a Secret Power. But last is Raichu who outspeeds and kills Fish 2 with a single Shockwave. I bring out one Fish and hit a Tail Whip as Raichu sets up Double Team. Then it uses Thunder Wave and I get paralyzed. At this point, it's only a matter of time until one Fish goes down. I try to go for Mega Kick instead of Dig, because being paralyzed means that I'd need to dodge two full paras every time I tried to Dig. Plus, since Dig is only 60 base power in this game, it's not much better than Mega Kick anyways. Even so, at this point, in order to win this battle, I'd have to get really lucky and hit a critical hit Mega Kick through Paralysis and Raichu's double teams. But obviously I don't do that. So that's attempt one. On attempt two in the first battle against Lance Bulbasaur, he gets two critical hit tackles right in a row. So I lose the battle. On to attempt 3. This time, one fish has a modest nature, which is pretty awesome. But Lan doesn't seem to think so, and he kills me in the first fight again. Okay, so in attempt 4, one fish is brave, which is a pretty bad nature for Squirtle. Plus attack, minus speed. But at least we don't instantly die to land in the first battle. The attempt is alive. After beating Brock, I again buy an outrageously priced Magikarp. But this time, I name her Two Fish as intended. Two Fish has a lonely nature in this attempt, which gives her plus attack. In this attempt, I also make sure to do all of Two Fish's leveling up against Mankeys on Route 22 and Pidgey and Rattata on Route 1 so that she gets attack and speed EVs. This will hopefully be enough to outspeed and one-shot Lieutenant Surge's Raichu. Surge leads Voltorb, which now is able to be one-shot by a single secret power. Pikachu also goes down to a single secret power. And what's nice about secret power here is that it doesn't actually make physical contact, so static won't even activate. Raichu is last, and we end up outspeeding it but unfortunately it doesn't get the one shot. However, it does paralyze Raichu, and then Raichu gets fully paralyzed. Turn tables, oh the how have. Surge stalls his demise with a super potion, but a few more secret powers finish off Raichu, winning us the third gym badge. That secret power paralysis was lucky for sure, but Two Fish actually can survive a shockwave from Raichu because Gyarados has a great special defense stat. So as long as the shockwave didn't crit, I probably would have been fine. Either way, the hardest part of this run is over. Next up is Erika in Saladon City. But before challenging her, I go to what appears to be a secret classroom on the roof of a building. Inside there's an Eevee in a Pokeball sitting on the table. So obviously it belongs to me now. Finders keepers. I name her Redfish. Then I immediately throw a Water Stone at her face so that she evolves into a Vaporeon. Now it's time to challenge Erika. This could theoretically be kind of hard since water is weak to grass, but Erika sucks. Also, I got the TM for Return, so Two Fish now hits really hard. She leads Victory Bell, who survives a Return and then hits a Stun Spore, but a Lumberry cures the Paralysis. So on the next turn, a second Return takes it out. Next is Tangela, and Tangela could poison me here, but it just goes for Ingrain, because as I said before, Erika sucks. After she heals with a Hyper Potion, a few more Returns take it out. Last is Erika's Vileplume. It does tank a return, and then it hits a Stun Spore. And so if I get fully paralyzed a few turns in a row, this could start looking pretty bad, 
but I manage to hit a return on the next turn, and Vileplume goes down. I recognize that Gyarados is pretty overpowered here, but without him, this challenge is sort of impossible. Just to balance it out a little bit, I did decide at the start of this challenge that I wouldn't be using Dragon Dance on Gyarados. But even so, he's pretty powerful. Anyways, now our level cap jumps up by 14 levels, and after beating Giovanni and Team Rocket, the map opens up and I'm able to pick up the Super Rod. So now it's time to go fishing. I start by catching a Krabby on Route 12. I name him Bluefish. Then I head to Route 25 and catch a Slowpoke. I name her Blackfish. Then on Route 6, I catch a Poliwag and name her Bluefish. Then I go to Vermilion City and fish up a Staryu, and I name it Old Fish. I've got a few more encounters to catch around Fuchsia City, but on the way, Blackfish evolves into Slowbro. Once I get to Fuchsia City, I go to the Safari Zone and fish up a Sea King. I name her New Fish. And finally, I go to Route 119 and fish up a Horsey. I name him This One. And for now, that's all the encounters I can get. I decide to add Blackfish the Slowbro, Bluefish the Poliwag, and This One the Horsey to my team, and the rest go in the box. Next, one fish evolves into Blastoise. Though, here's a question for you Pokemon pronunciation purists out there. If Blastoise is the combination of Blast and Tortoise, shouldn't it be pronounced Blastis? Weird, right? Almost as if Pokemon pronunciations are pretty much arbitrary. Anyways, next up, Bluefish evolves into Poliwhirl. And then it's time to take on Koga. He leads with a coughing, and I lead with Blackfish, who hits a confusion for a one-shot. Muck is second, and hits Blackfish with a toxic. She retaliates with a critical hit confusion, which leaves Muck with a sliver. So I switch to two fish as Koga uses a hyper potion. I hit a return for over half health, and Muck uses minimize, since evasion and accuracy spamming are basically the only things that Gen 3 AI knows how to do. It doesn't work though. Two fish connects with another return and knocks out Muck. Coughing comes out, so I switch to Blackfish and get hit with a smoke screen. See what I mean? But again, it doesn't work, as I hit a confusion to knock it out. And then last is Weezing, so I switch to Two Fish, and you will never guess what move it uses. But again, my Pokemon seemingly could not care less about the smoke screens because I hit a return on the next turn. Then, ironically, Weezing misses a Toxic. And then on the next turn, I connect with another return, which gives us the win. There's a darker alternate timeline where I missed every single attack in this battle and lost. So crisis averted. Now that I've got access to Surf, I can get two more encounters. From Route 20, I catch a Tentacool and name him Has A. Although Tentacruel is a really amazing Pokemon, I used it in my last Kanto Nuzlocke, so I decide to box him. I picked Slowbro over Sarmie for similar reasons. This challenge isn't particularly difficult, so I might as well have some fun with some Pokemon that I haven't used recently. I also go to Seafoam Islands and catch a Seal. I name her Little Star. She joins the team in place of this one, the Horsey, and then she evolves into Dugon. Next is the fifth rival fight in the Sylphco building, which can be pretty challenging. Land leads Pidgeot, and I lead Little Star, who takes it out with an Ice Beam. Venusaur comes out second, so I use an Icy Wind so that I don't drop it into Overgrowth range. But then it hits me with the Sleep Powder. So I switch to Blackfish, who gets hit really hard with a Razor Leaf. A crit would have just killed me straight up. I'm not confident that I'll be able to outspeed it even with the speed drop from Icy Wind, because Slowbro, believe it or not, is slow. So I switch to one fish who gets hit hard with another Razor Leaf. Then I switch back to Little Star, who also gets hit by a Razor Leaf. Since Little Star is already asleep, I can now safely switch to two fish without getting put to sleep. On the next turn, a return knocks out the Venusaur. Then Land sends out his own Gyarados. I get intimidated, so I switch to one fish. Then I switch to blue fish and hit Gyarados with a Hypnosis, which thankfully hits. Then I switch back to two fish. Land's Gyarados instantly wakes up, but two returns is enough to take it out as it just uses Dragon Rage. Fourth for Land is an adorable little Growlithe, so I switch to Bluefish, brush off a takedown, and put it to sleep with Hypnosis. Then I set up a Rain Dance, and then the Growlithe instantly wakes up, so I put it back to sleep with another Hypnosis. I'm pretty surprised that I'm hitting all of these Hypnoses. After that, I switch to One Fish, and finally I knock out the Growlithe with a Surf. And then last is Alakazam, which is the whole reason why I bothered setting up Rain with Bluefish in the first place. Alakazam's only attacking move is Future Sight, so in the Rain, a single Surf is able to one-shot it before it can get any damage off or set up with Calm Mind and Recover. And that's Land defeated. After that, this Silifco employee gives me a Lapra. I name her Little Car, but she goes in the box. Lapra is significantly better than Dugon, but eh, Little Star is trying her best. She can stay on the team for now. After smacking down Giovanni, it's time to face Sabrina. Before that, I evolved Bluefish into Poliwrath using a Water Stone. 
I delayed it up until this point so that she could learn Belly Drum at level 43. But anyways, now that I finally have my water fighting type, it's time to take on Sabrina. But with Blackfish, she's kind of a total joke. I've taught Blackfish Shadow Ball, and since Shadow Ball is physical in this game, it more or less tears through Sabrina's entire team. Venomoth is a little annoying to take down because it wastes time with healing, and Mr. Mime also wastes time by setting up a barrier, but none of Sabrina's Pokemon can really do much damage to Blackfish, so it's a pretty easy victory for badge number 6. And then from here, it's time to head to Cinnabar Island. I get my final encounter by reviving my Helix Fossil into an Ammonite. I name her Say, and then she goes into the box. Praise be. Next up, it's time for Blaine. And finally, for the first time in any of my Kanto challenges, Blaine is an easy sweep. Little Star clears through his entire team with Stab Surfs. His Arcanine does hold on thanks to the level difference, but that's fine. A few turns later, we've won the battle and gotten the seventh gym badge. Phew, that gym can be pretty tough sometimes. From here, we can just skip straight to the eighth gym leader, Giovanni. It's been a while since one fish has cleared through an entire gym leader's team all by himself, and he's grown up so much since then, so I figured it'd be poetic to let him take the last one. Nothing really to report here, surfs make it a clean sweep. And that's badge number 8. The last thing to do is to make my way through Victory Road and fight the Elite Four. But I realize that after I go through Victory Road, if I want to leave the Indigo Plateau to buy TMs or items, I'm going to need to go all the way back through Victory Road, or I'm going to have to catch a Pokemon with Fly. So I quickly catch the Sphero. I'm not sure if I've ever stated it in my videos before, but I do use other Pokemon for HMs in almost all of my challenges. Anyways, here's my final team, leveled up to the level cap of 60 to match Lance's Dragonite. I'm pretty happy with the team. Everyone's pretty bulky, which is good since most of them aren't very fast. Let's see if we've got what it takes. First is Lorelei with her Ice types. She leads Dugon and I lead Bluefish. I immediately go for a Belly Drum, which maxes out my attack. Dugon hits a weak surf, and then Brick Break knocks it out. Next is Slowbro, so I hit it with a Body Slam, but even at plus 6 attack, it's not quite enough for a one-shot. Body Slam does paralyze the Slowbro though, and then it gets fully paralyzed. And you might be thinking that this was incredibly lucky, but the Slowbro doesn't actually know any Psychic-type moves, so I wasn't going down even if it did get a surf off. The rest of Lorelei's team just goes down to Brick Breaks and Body Slams, and that's an easy victory. Second is Bruno. He leads Onyx, and I lead Redfish. Redfish knocks out the Onyx with a single Surf. Then Hitmonchan comes out, and it does decent damage with Sky Uppercut, but two Surfs is enough to take it out. Third is Hitmonlee, who hits a pretty weak Mega Kick, and then goes down to two Surfs. Fourth is Machamp, so I switch to two Fish to intimidate it. Then I switch to Blackfish on the Rock Tomb, and then a Psychic knocks it out in one shot. Bruno's last Pokemon is a Primeape. Just kidding, that would make way too much sense. It's another Onyx, so it goes down to a Surf. Third is Agatha. She leads Gengar, and I lead one Fish. Gengar uses Double Team, and then I miss a Surf. It uses another Double Team on the second turn, but I manage to hit a Surf. But then Gengar uses Confuse Ray, and I hit myself in Confusion. I'm really starting to understand why Oak and Agatha no longer get along. Agatha sucks. Gengar uses Shadow Punch for a little bit of damage, and then one Fish ends all of this nonsense by hitting a Surf and knocking out the Gengar. Golbat comes out second, so I switch to Little Star, who shrugs off an air cutter and retaliates with an ice beam for the one shot. Arabok is third, and after taking about half health from a surf, it gets a surprisingly hard sludge bomb off, but then the Arabok goes down to a second surf, and then Agatha's second Gengar comes out. So I switch to Redfish, who takes a hypnosis on the switch. A Chestoberry heals it though, and then on the next turn, Gengar just goes for a sludge bomb as Redfish retaliates with a surf. One more Sludge Bomb and Surf trade-off leaves Gengar in the red, so I switch to Blackfish as Agatha uses a full restore. On the next turn, Gengar hits another Hypnosis, but a Chesto Berry heals Blackfish, who retaliates with a Psychic for the one-shot. And then last is Haunter, who goes for another Hypnosis, but that one misses, so Psychic knocks it out, and that's Agatha defeated. The final Elite Four member is Lance. He leads Gyarados, and I lead two fish. We intimidate each other, and then I hit a critical hit return, which bypasses the attack drop and knocks out Lance's Gyarados in one shot. That was fun. Next is Aerodactyl, so I switch to Blackfish. Aerodactyl hits an Ancient Power on the switch, and it gets the Omni Boost. On the next turn, Aerodactyl hits a Wing Attack, which now does a sizable chunk of damage at plus one attack. I retaliate with a Surf, which Aerodactyl survives thanks to a plus one special defense. Fortunately, Aerodactyl doesn't get a crit with Ancient Power on the next turn, so I am able to knock it out with another Surf. Crisis averted. 
Next is Lance's first Dragonair, so I switch to Little Star, who tanks an Outrage. Then an Ice Beam knocks out the Dragonair. It was a critical hit though, so I'm not sure if it matters, but I guess we'll find out because Lance sends out his second Dragonair. It too goes down to an Ice Beam though, this time with no crit. And then last is Dragonite, who also goes down to an Ice Beam. And that's the Elite Four. The last thing to do is have one final battle with our rival. He's the new champion, but we're here to rain on his parade. Get it? Because because rain is water, and it's a water type challenge? It's okay. I'll understand if you dislike this video for that joke. Land leads Pidgeot, so I lead Little Star, who hits it with an Ice Beam. The Pidgeot survives and retaliates with an Aerial Ace for a little bit of damage. Then Land goes for a full restore, but on the next turn, an Ice Beam finishes it off. Rhydon comes out next to hit Little Star with a Rock type move, but Surf knocks it out before it gets the chance. So then third is Venusaur. I hit it with an Icy Wind to avoid Overgrow range again, but it does way less damage than I was expecting. Venusaur prepares for a Solar Beam, which means that I could have just killed it with two Ice Beams. I'm not sure if a single Ice Beam will kill it here though, so I just switch to two fish to tank the Solar Beam. Oof. Both times I've done a Monotype Water Challenge, my Gyarados has died to a critical hit against the champion. Well, that sucks. Time to see if Little Star would have been able to kill the Venusaur with an Ice Beam. Or I guess she'll just get a critical hit, and we'll never know. Okay, fourth is Alakazam, so it's time to switch to Blackfish. Alakazam hits a few Psychics, but Blackfish is able to do significantly more damage with Shadow Ball. Land ends up stalling his demise for a few turns by using full restores. On the second Shadow Ball that we hit, we actually drop Alakazam's special defense. Which seems really weird since Shadow Ball is a physical move in this game, but whatever. A few turns later and Alakazam goes down. Fifth is Arcanine, so I switch to one fish who gets tickled by a bite. Two surfs take it out. And then last is Gyarados. So I switch to Bluefish, who gets hit by a Dragon Rage. Then I use Belly Drum. And finally, I knock out Gyarados with a plus six body slam. Or not. Bluefish is really bad. Well, whatever. An Ice Beam from Little Star finishes off Gyarados, which wins us the battle and the run. That was a fun one. Definitely not super difficult, but there's something very relaxing and nostalgic about playing through Kanto, so I always enjoy doing it. I also did most of this challenge while I was on an airplane traveling, so I had to make sure to pick a challenge that wouldn't require a lot of calculations or research. It's been a while since I've done a seriously difficult challenge, so I'll be sure to get one of those out to you all pretty soon. As always, thank you so much for watching and for all your continued support. If you enjoyed watching, please like the video and subscribe. Or don't. I, I don't know but it does help and mean a lot. And you should also make sure to follow me on Twitter and Twitch to keep up with streams of my future challenges. And you should also join the Flygon HG community Discord where you can discuss nuzlocking and make recommendations for future challenges. The link is in the description below. Stay tuned for more Nuzlocke videos, and until then, remember to always, always, always play around the critical hit.